Hey, yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite picks, predictions, sports betting, MMA channel, Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick. I'm here with my bro host extraordinaire. You know what it is. It's Ray Bucks. It's Chuckle Jordan. It's Mr. Give Me My Belt. Have me my crown. I'm not going to say the part like God. Oh, no. Actually, I am going to say the part like God. Because I did hit three of those motherfuckers. I hit the two. I hit the three. And I think I hit the four. Yeah, if I'm fucking correct. You know what I mean? I told y'all what to do. So if y'all did more than that, then well. Sorry, mate. It is what it is. Uh, Black Nostradamus. Black Jesus. Black Moses. Y'all know what it is. I'm parting the fucking Red Sea for the fucking homies. Yeah, shit. Uh... Yeah, last week, I think you and me flip-flopped this week. Uh, I think it ended up still being 10 fights last week, I think. And, it was uh, 12. Maybe it was five. that. It, it was might be 6 12. and 6. I was 6. I know I was Yeah, we flip-flopped yeah, yeah. to where it was. Yeah, you ended up being the one who was one over on your fight total. And then I ended up being even at a... Six no, I wasn't over. You, oh. you were over. I was on. I was at even. I literally oh, hit so even. you did six and six, and mm -hmm. I did the one fight. Seven, seven, five. Seven, seven and five. Seven and five. Okay. I put you at twelve fights. What okay. a dumbass! Okay. So my math is solid. Y'all see the <laughs> Y'all see the graphics up here. But this week we are here to cover this weekend's fight night. It's gonna be a middleweight bout between Jared Cannonier going up against Kyle Barajo. Um, it. Looks like this is a 10 fight card. fight in the prelims it's a flyweight bout in the women's division we got UFC newcomer Kong Wang going up against Victoria Leonardo um man I took everything to fucking not <laughs> just <laughs> grow the fuck up Nothing, man <laughs> uh Kong Wang <laughs> Coming in, hey yo, uh, making their UFC debut. They're five and zero overall. Uh, <laughs> we got Leonardo. They are one and three in the UFC, nine and five overall, and two and three in their last five fights. Um, I'm gonna be going with Wang in this fight. Decision or so. Uh. <laughs> They seem to be, you know, a pretty experienced prospect with a kickboxing background. Um, notably, in that kickboxing um, run, they have a win over Valentina Shevchenko, who is going to be vying for that flyweight title here next month. Um, you know, I just feel like this is kind of like a showcase fight. Like, don't get me wrong, Leonardo could turn this into, you know, like a grappling match and potentially, you know... Uh, send you know, send Wang packing. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I think that you know what I noticed is that Wang um took some years off in between that kickboxing stint and their first MMA fights. So, and I think that was actually time that they used to actually you know learn to sport train and you know be able to actually you know be good at it so i just feel like uh they're coming in here to make a name for themselves leonardo um they're well-rounded um they got a good gas tank i wouldn't necessarily say they're durable but i just think that wang is more well-rounded hey, and has more routes to victory that's a bit sassy well-rounded wang huh? <laughs> oh my god it's not funny <laughs> I think 
Leonardo's about to receive the No, 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 potato. Um, Leonardo is a uh, um, um, disrespecting <coughs> the uh, Dragon Ball universe because if you look at her topology, she's got a fucking Goku uniform on, and she's definitely not Goku in women's MMA. <laughs> she's more of a Yamcha. Her last name shouldn't even be a Leonardo, like like the turtle or nothing like that. You know what I mean? She's definitely like a, a maybe like a Casey Jones, I guess, or or, or April O'Neil. Excuse you know what I mean? me. I guess that would be the what weakest the in the, uh, the turtle universe. Anyway, <laughs> that being said, uh, Leonardo gets the wing oh. um, <laughs> from Queen Kong. So there oh, we go. Oh shit. Alright, uh, moving up to the women's bantamweight division. We got Josiane Nunes going up against Jacqueline Calvacanti. Um, <laughs> we got Nunes coming in there 3-1 and one in the UFC, 10-2 and two overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five fights. Calvacanti's 1-0 and oh in the UFC, 6-1 and one overall, and 4-0 and wait. Four and one in their last five fights. Um, I'm gonna be going with Coffee County in this fight. I just I think they're gonna win either by like decision or KO. Um, they're gonna be the younger, taller, and longer fighter of the two. Uh, they're gonna have the better gas tank, and yeah, I just feel like you know they're definitely Noons to me is a little bit one dimensional. Um, they're gonna be the smaller and you know older fighter by about four years. Uh, I'd say their gas tanks a little bit in question to me, but once again, I just feel like they're a one-dimensional fighter. Um, not to say that <clears throat> Cavalcanti isn't gonna just strike in this bout, but I think they have a wider uh, array of weapons in their arsenal to strike with. So I'll be going with Cavalcanti. Cavalcanti's not gonna win. Um, we're going with uh, Nunes. Uh, Nunes has the more recent fight. Uh, Cavalcanti hasn't fought in almost a year. Um, just, uh, I think, one week short. Um, so, you mean, I don't like uh, the ring rust. That's a possibility with her. Um, I don't think either one of them are great fighters by any means. Um, obviously, Nunes is a little bit older. But uh, I, think, uh, I think she takes this one down um, in a decision victory because it's women's MMA. Um, moving on to the men's middleweight division, we got Jose Medina coming in to face Zach Reese. We got Medina coming in, making their UFC debut, although they had lost a contender series appearance. Um, they're going to be 11-3 overall, 4-1 and one in their last five fights. We got Reese coming in. They are 1-1 one and one in the UFC, 7-1 and one overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Reese by either KO or decision. They're going to be the younger, taller, and longer fighter of the two. Um, edge and grappling. Uh, they're going to have more routes to victory overall. And uh, I would just say, you know, given their uh, early, you know, they're, they're able to end bouts early, that their gas tank would be my only concern just because I don't necessarily know where that's at. Um, Medina, they're going to be the smaller fighter. Uh, they can, they're a striker primarily, but they can grapple. Um, they're going to have the long travel, you know, over to, you know, the apex. Uh, they kind of got, from the looks of it, a soft body. Uh, and they're, just, they're making their debut, like I said, uh, coming off of a loss from the contender series. So this is, to me, I feel like maybe a fight that they're trying to use to get Reese, you know, back on track, get them a couple wins up under their belt to see if they can start, you know, propelling them back up into, you know, some more stiffer competition. Um, But, yeah, I'll be going with Reese on this one. I think that's just an easy pick. I think uh, Reese is definitely uh, – he's, he's a UFC veteran. Um, He's definitely been in the cage far more often than uh, jo uh Jose Medina has been. Um. And like you said, uh, Jose Medina is a fat, fat body. So uh, did I say that? No, when did I say <laughs> that? No, no, no. When did I say that? Uh, soft body, but okay. Um, fat, soft, soft fat. Same thing. Moving to the men's lightweight division, um, we got Vicheslav 
Borshev going up against James Lontop. You got Borshev coming in. They are two and three with one draw in the UFC. Seven, four, and that one draw overall. And then uh, one and three with that one draw in their last five fights. Uh, Lontop's coming in. They are 0 and one in the UFC. 14 and three overall and four and one in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Long Top in this one by KO or decision. They're going to be the long, younger, taller, longer fighter. Uh, they got a good gas tank. Um, they can grapple, but they're definitely primarily going to just want to strike in this bout. Uh, and they, they do have more routes to victory overall. Um, Borshev's going to be the smaller and older fighter by about seven years. Um... I wouldn't say they have the greatest of gas tanks, uh, and I just think they may be at a stage in their career where the game's beginning to pass them up, and or they just may not quite be UFC caliber. Like they they they've been able to hold their own, you know, in one bout, but you know, other than that, they've lost three, and you know, came to a draw with uh, Sadikov, which was a great fight. Uh, I may have even edged it to Sadikov, but. You know, that that's how things played out. Um, but yeah, I just think that Borishev, the uh, time starting to pass them by. Uh, I'll be going with Long Top. Uh, I'm going to go with Borishev. Uh, Borishev is seven years old. You are correct on that. Um, I just... Uh, I just don't see Long Top winning. He's just... Like, you have... I mean, you got... Rear naked choked by Chris Padilla. Um, like he he's got contenders wins. Like so, he's only got one true UFC fight. Um, Borishev has multiple UFC fights. Uh, you know what I mean? So I just don't sure if Long Top is UFC caliber. Um, in addition to that, uh, they're both strikers primarily, um, and I think Borshev is the better striker of the two. Um, but I will say that Long Top does have the ability to submit uh, folks. Um, so he does have that winning as a, an extra route to victory. I just don't think it's going to get to that point. Yeah, I got you. Uh, moving on to the men's featherweight division. We got Dennis Bazookia going up against short notice replacement Francis, Francis Marshall. Um, we got Bazuki coming in there, one and two in the UFC, twelve and four overall, and three and two in their last five fights. We got uh, Marshall coming in there, one and two in the UFC, seven and two overall, and two and three in their last five fights. Once again, um, they're coming in on short notice. Literally, uh, as we're record recording this on a Tuesday, is when that fight got switched up. So um, Bazuki was. Originally uh, scheduled to face Danny Silva, but uh, now they got uh, Marshall coming in. We got uh, Bazookia, I think, going to win by, like, decision or sub. Um, they just have more routes to victory, even with this new uh, replacement. Um, they're going to be a powerful striker with a good gas tank. Uh, Marshall, they're going to be the slightly longer fighter. And um, they'll have like that. They'll have the edge in, in in grappling, but they ain't got no hands. And I think I may have made a mistake, and I want Bazookia to win by either a uh, decision or KO. That's where I think they're gonna. Win. I don't know why I got sub in there, but what a anyway, dumbass. Um, yeah, I just think Marshall. He's just here to do the company a favor. You know, it'll uh reap some rewards for him down the line. But today. Or on Saturday, he's going to have to take a L. For sure. Uh, Marshall's on a two-fight slide anyway. Um, his last fight a year ago, uh, he got slid, you know what I mean, for a KO. Um, so I've, I've got to believe also in the, the KO possibility of B Bazookia knocking his dumb ass out. Um, and, it, I, it, it, again, he's, he's coming in on short notice, like good for him. You know what I mean? Showing up uh, midweek for a, a, a Saturday night card. Um, or not midweek, I guess kind of close to... Ah, eh, it's midweek. Fuck that. Anyway, uh, Zuki for the win, for sure. Definitely, definitely. 
All right, uh, starting out the main card for this uh, Saturday, we got a middleweight bout between Edmund Shabazian going up against Gerald Mearshart. We got Shabazian coming in six and four in the UFC, fourteen or thirteen and four overall, and two and three in their last five fights. We got Mearshart coming in there eleven and nine in the UFC. 36 and 17 overall, and they're two and three in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Mearshart in this one. Um, I I'm not like super confident in it, but I mean, picking between him and Shabazian, I've just seen you know Shabazian. Now they're young, but like there there's something to be said for when you take a lot of L's when you're de you know in development too, you know so. I just feel like Shabazzian was not those one of those guys who came out real hot and then they tried to, you know, up him into, you know, some stiffer competition and it proved that he wasn't ready. So maybe he's like in a reset mode and is now like kind of gradually making his way back. He just won his last fight against AJ Dobson, but I feel like Dobson obviously has a paper chin because, you know, Shabazzian made pretty quick work of him. Um, but yeah, Mearshart's gonna be the older fighter by like 10 years. Uh, they're definitely gonna be the better grappler of the two. They have decent enough striking, but, um, they def their chin is pretty weathered. So I would hope that they're not trying to look to keep this on the feet too long. Um, but overall, I'd just say they have more routes to victory because Shabazian can be caught. And uh, I just feel like their cardio is trash. Um, although Shabazzian will be the slightly taller fighter and, you know, younger by 10 years. And they'll have the edge in the striking, but I just, I just don't know if they're going to be able to apply their game plan, especially if they're not able to kind of like flash knock out Mearshart. So if this goes to the ground, it's definitely not going to, it's going to get dark quick. For Shabazi, and so um, I'm gonna be going with Mir Shark for the uh, upset victory. Gerald's gonna shark his pants. Gerald's <laughs> gonna fuck it happen. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Edmund Shabazian's gonna win this goddamn fight. Uh, um, he's goddamn 10 years younger, right? Mm -hmm. Always gotta go with the younger fighter. Um, he's got hands. Um, Mir Shark does have a ground game, but again, if you know how to do a sprawl, which is the easiest thing to do in the UFC or to learn as a martial art, you'll be all right. So I believe he'll learn that, or he already learned that. Um, so Shabazzian for the win. Uh, sorry, shut your pants. <laughs> Taking it out. You know, it's funny that you say you always got to go with the younger guy considering your next pick in this uh, next bout we got. Uh, we're going to be moving on to what I believe is the men's welterweight division. We got Michael Morales going up against Neil Magny. We got Morales coming in. They are undefeated 4-0 in the UFC as well as 16-0 overall. Um, Magny is coming in 22-10 in the UFC. 29 and 11 overall in our three and two in their last five bouts. <laughs> now, I'm going with Magny by sub or decision, but this man is coming in the older fighter by 12 years. And uh, they're going to be the longer and taller fighter. Definitely the better grappler of the two. Just a crafty vet who is durable and has great cardio. Don't get me wrong. You know, I've seen him, you know, get broken and or, you know, um, I don't know uh, if he's ever, let me check this. I just want to see real quick. He's ever been chinned? He's been, he's been chinned before, but these were early on in his career. Uh, mostly now it's just uh, either by grappling or decision that he loses. So he's an old dude, but he's super durable and just kind of like a dog. Um, and his gas tank is 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 great, so he's gonna he's gonna be able to go the entirety of this fight. Whereas Morales, although they are the younger, you know, undefeated fighter, they're gonna be slightly smaller in this bout. 
Um, they're basically only primarily a striker, no real grappling, and I've seen their fucking uh, energy get zapped over the course of uh, three round fights. You know, especially given uh, the way that they're known to end fights early, so it's kind of been proven that they don't necessarily have the gas tank, or that's just something they need to be working on. So hopefully they have, but uh, because I don't know that. Uh, and given Magny's most recent performance, uh, in, in Canada against one of their fucking highly touted prospects and Mike Malott, I got to go with Magny in this one. I know you called me out, um, uh, cause sure I'm going with the older fighter now. <laughs> um, definitely going with the older fighter in this particular bout. Um, this is the, one of the, my favorite picks of the night. Um, I'm not going to say it's a lock of the night, but to me, it makes so much sense. Um, a, he's a plus 450 underdog. B, like uh, Cam said, he has no gas tank. Or, or not, he doesn't have, uh, Magni has a gas tank. Morales does not have a gas tank. Morales has no ground game. Like none. Like literally none. Like he can get up. And it's not he's getting up because of technique. He's getting up based on sheer power and force that he's able to, like, stand back up and, uh, you know what I mean, keep it moving. Um, Magni has got one of the highest fight IQs in all of MMA, in my opinion. Um, and he's the gatekeeper. He's the gatekeeper. He's, he's the one that keeps you out of uh, 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 the rankings. The rankings. And that's that's his move, and he loves that fucking spot. And, uh, man, I think this is one I'm going to bet fairly heavy on um, because I just believe it happens, and it's going to, like, the, the money's going to be there, right? Because it's, a, 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 again, plus 450. Like, where do you get it? it, it just, this, this fight just makes so much sense to me. I just feel like um, Morales has to crack him. Morales like that's what happens. has, like to, crack he has him. to crack him early and fucking basically keep him on his back foot the entire fight. But it will not happen. Magni, Magni gets him up against that fence and starts, you know, uh, clinching with him. But just Magni just Magni has too fight. high of a fight IQ to, like, get clipped like that. Magni doesn't get clipped, like you said. He's only got clipped early on in his fight career. He doesn't clip, get clipped anymore. He gets into... You know what I mean? Crazy shit with great wrestlers, great submission artists, great um, BJJs. You know what I mean? But not striking. It's not. He's not gonna get caught striking. He's not the best striker. Um, but I think he's able to slip and dodge. You know what I mean? And and, and do that and uh, uh, defend himself very well um, versus a striker. And you know what I mean? Find his point when this dude gets tired. Towards the end of the second round, third round, shoot his, his his takedown, get the takedown, and Michael Morales is not getting up from said takedown. But Michael Morales has the puncher's chance of clipping him randomly, but I just don't see it because it's not in Magny's resume that that happens to him. So I think Magny's one of the best picks on this card um, just from a value standpoint, if nothing else. Um, and I, I truly believe that, that uh, Magni wins this one. All right. Moving on to the middleweight division. We have a bout between UFC newcomers Ryan Loader going up against Robert Valentin. Uh, or Valentin, not sure. Uh, but either way, we got Loader coming in, making their UFC debut. 6-1 and one overall and 4-1 and one in their last five fights. We got Valentin coming in, UFC debut, 10 and 3 with one no contest overall, and 4 and 0 oh with one no contest in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Valentin. Um, I think I said this fool's name like three different ways, but anyways, I'm going to be going with Valentin uh, by sub or decision. They're going to be the younger fighter. Um, by a few years, four years or so, uh, they're going to have an edge in the grappling and just more routes to victory overall. Looks like Loader uh, 
coming in. They're going to be the older fighter by four years and just like primarily a striker with no real grappling. I'm assuming maybe just like some good takedown defense, but I wouldn't assume uh, much more than that. Uh, I just think that ba Valentin um, poses more threats. So that's who I will be going with in this battle of the newcomers. Can somebody explain why these two fucks who have never fought in the UFC <laughs> get to be part of the fucking main card, literally under the co-main? Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, what? That doesn't even make sense to me. They ain't enough to go, go through, you know, nothing. Contender, contender Series. series nothing. So they must, UFC, be, like, they must be wrecking fools, bro. Sometimes fools fucking uh, just have a really good highlight reel and they don't have to prove. They want to see you do that shit right now. They don't even want to waste a fucking Contender Series fucking card on that shit. They want to see you fucking jump and get that shit done right now. Both these fools must crack, so it's like literally a win-win situation. It's like one of these fools is going to crack the other fool and fucking um, they get the best of the two fools that they got to fucking, you know, play chicken with one another. Like, it's kind of a win-win, it sounds like to me. I mean, yeah, they could have did it on Contender Series, but maybe you end up making a fucking... You know, maybe like these fools are gonna like yeah, like one of these fools are gonna die. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like you, you know, <coughs> I'd rather you die in a fucking like a actual fight than on contender series. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, brilliant. Uh, I'm going with Robert Valentin, uh, or Valentine, or Valentine, uh, Valentin, or Valentin, Valentin. Um, versus Ryan Loader. Um, like. Take this pick with a grain of salt. I don't give a fuck about either one of these dudes. I've never seen them fight in the UFC. They've never really fought in anything credible, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, that just is what it is. But, uh, yeah, Robert Valentin. Um, that's my guy. Boom. All right, moving on to the co-main event of the evening in the women's strawweight division. We got Angela Hill going up against Tabitha Ricci. Oh, we got... Angela Hill coming in. They are 12 and 13 in the UFC. Uh 17 and 13 overall and 4 and 1 in their last 5 fights. We got Richie coming in. They are 5 and 2 in the UFC. 10 and 2 overall and 4 and 1 in their last 5 fights. Um I guess uh it's just it's it's a uh, old heads night for me because I'm also going to be going with Angela Hill in this fight. Um, I think they'll win by either decision or KO. Most likely decision. If you've ever watched Angela Hill fight, that that's you know it, her record speaks for itself. Um, they're gonna be the older fighter by ten years. They actually are uh, forty years young, and uh, they're gonna be the slightly taller and longer fighter in this bout. Um, but they are just a long-standing vet. Similar, basically like a women's Neil Magny, you know, don't let the record, you know, especially the UFC record fool you like she's out here fighting people almost on a weekly basis. And that's, you know, at least that's how she had a run going for a while there. So, you know, um, she's just out there just having fun, really. And uh, they're just that yeah, longstanding vet of super durable and uh, they're going to have some great cardio. Um, Ricci, they're going to be the younger fighter. They're uh, pretty well-rounded, you know, making their way up the ranks. Um, but I just don't believe that their level of competition is the same. And uh, they're still developing, in my, in my opinion. And this is like, again, just like one of those perfect fights for Angela Hill to, you know, upset the young prospect because ultimately that is what Angela Hill is at this point in her career is like the uh, gatekeeper. And uh, yeah, she's still going strong even at 40 years old. And I, I just believe that she's going to be the one that kind of humbles Richie and helps her take herself to that next level having had been humbled. So I'll be going with Hill. Um, this is going to be a bullshit ass decision, bullshit ass fight, boring as fuck. Um, not a fan of it. Um, you know what I mean? Hill, Richie, I take Richie over Hill. Hill's old as fuck. You know what I mean? Uh, at thirty nine years old versus twenty nine years old. Um, 
this is my co-main event. This is this is literally like, oh shit, like let's get fucking turn the lights off and fucking play their fucking dumbass music. No, this is trash. Like what are we fucking doing, UFC? Like Angela Hill and Tabitha Ritchie. Like garbage fight. This is a garbage fight. I'm not being out of pocket. Come on, like what are we like oh somebody's gonna like fucking K somebody? No. It's gonna be a fucking slap fight. Moving on to the main event of the evening. I don't like that shit. For sure, bro. Yeah, the I don't like that bit. shit. I don't know how I feel about it. We'll get back to that another time. Just get rid of it. Uh, Just like the whole fucking sound effect in there. We got to admit. You're the editor. Like, sound effect it. Shut the fuck up. We got up. a middleweight bout. <laughs> Between Jared Cannonier going up against Kyle Barajo. Um, we got Cannonier coming in 10 and 7 in the UFC, 17 and 7 overall, and 3 and 2 in their last five bouts. We got Barajo coming in. They are a perfect 6 and 0 oh in the UFC. Uh 16 and 1 with one no contest overall. And are currently riding a 15 fight win streak. Um, I'm going to be going with Barajo in this fight, either by submission or decision. They're going to be the younger and taller fighter in this bout. Um, very sticky grappler. Uh, decent hands, but are going to be looking to want to get this to the ground as soon as possible. They got a good gas tank and uh, are going to you know, be looking to grapple continuously throughout this one. We got Cannoneer coming in. They're going to be the older fighter by nine years. Uh, they're going to be the longer of the two and, um, they'll have the edge in the striking. They're the more powerful striker. They throw, you know, as of late, a decent amount of volume. Um, they got some, you know, pretty good takedown defense. Uh, they don't really partake too much in the grappling. Um, and, uh, I just think the only issue is they're going to be durable, but, uh, they just, they don't really have a killer instinct, even though they're called the killer gorilla. Um, to me personally, they just got more of that competitor's mindset. And I really think kind of use MMA just to kind of just better themselves as a person. And, you know, um, I feel like are, are, are definitely invested in the lifestyle. And it just so happens that they're also, you know, a top, uh, ranked competitor in the division, but they just, I feel like they fight more so not to lose rather than having that killer instinct and going in there to really, you know, be a champion. And even more so, you know, when they fought for the title and, and got humbled, you know, um, I think that they're hungry to get back to that title, but I just don't think they have the skills necessary to really like, um, make a run for it like that. And, Given their last uh, performance against uh, Nasruddin Imovov, um, it just looked like they were they were fading round by round, and uh, getting like it almost seemed even like a little more gun shy as the uh, rounds went by. Whereas uh, Barajo, they're super hungry and they're just they're gonna go in there and try and get this done as soon as possible. Uh, they like to show off their hands because they're so known for their grappling, but. Uh, don't get it twisted. If they see uh, uh, the opening for the finish via ground, then uh, they'll make that happen. I'm going with Barajo. I got to go with Barajo, too. Um, Cannonier, in my opinion, got robbed on his last fight. Not necessarily because he was going to win, but like they shouldn't have called it a... Um, a, a, a stopped it when they, they did. They shouldn't have stopped it. Uh, I think he was going to lose that fight, for sure. But I don't think it should have been stopped. Uh, he was still um, alive and breathing and moving and all the things. Um, it was an early stoppage, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, Brajo is a very, excuse me, a very um, active fighter, very hungry fighter, very ready to like, get after it. I don't see any reason why he doesn't win. Uh, and that's what I expect to happen. Is uh, Brajo uh, treats uh, 
What's his name? The killer gorilla? Like the fucking vanilla gorilla. Who, me? <laughs> I think there is a vanilla gorilla out there somewhere. There might be. Well, that. what's 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 the what's the name of like the cartoon character like Manila Gorilla or something yeah. like that? Like pink ass gorilla. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Hanna Barbera shit. Like Jerry Cannonier, you're gonna be a Hanna Barbera fucking gorilla in the cartoon line of it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, that concludes our picks and our predictions and picks portion of this show. Uh, moving on to the parlay portion, looking at it, I didn't really get a chance to put anything together, but I guess I would say personally, you could go with like Zach Reese, Bazookia, um, and Barajo, and then I guess maybe if you want to spice it up, spicy. you know, throw a spicy Magni on that. You know, maybe a spicy mirror shark, uh, spicy hill, you know? So I'll give you a base three, and then, yeah, three spices with that. Um, Run it back, because you kind of got a little, like... So what's your use your base? Hit him with the base. The base is Zach Reese, Bazookia, and Barajo. And then if you want to get spicy with it, you can go with mirror shark, Magni, or hill. Okay, I respect that. I got a. I'm gonna start you off again. I think this is what I'm gonna do from now on. You know what I mean? Cause like, how do you motherfuckers talking about like, oh, your parlays? You ain't. How you the parlay god? You be missing parlays? Well, I'll check this out. Two pick parlay. You ready for this? Reese Borshev. Okay, that's your two pick. Now you're gonna make a three pick. You're gonna add Bazokia to that. Then, after that, you're going to add Shabazz You know what I mean? Chill the fuck out, bro. Chill the fuck out, bro. All right. Uh -huh. So you're fucking me up, bro. Okay. So Reese <laughs> Borshev, two. Uh -huh. Bazookia, three. Uh -huh. Shabazz four. Uh -huh. Magni for the five. And Magni, if we hit all five of them, Magni because he's a, a, a plus 450. You're about to fucking get bread. Matter of fact, give me just a second. Hold my beer. What the fuck? I'm about to show you motherfuckers like what it is for just a second. Oh, that's some whole ass shit right there. I just seen you do. That's all cool though. Like, you know what I mean? I, I understand the hate. You know what I mean? I would hate me too. Bro. Ooh, if I were you, I would hate me too. You know what I mean? All you had to do was just hold my fucking beer for a second. Yeah, but whatever, though. Whatever, though. Too. Whatever, my though. It's Cameron, not Koozie. Nigga. Oh, oh, my God. Like that was sweet. That was sweet. Get to what you want to do then. All right. Fucking, you know what I mean? I'm just uh, trying to get the game out here. Fucking pull, put my beer all far from me and shit. I got a little arms, bro. Whatever, though. Anyway. Uh, thanks again, you know, to everybody who's been watching. Uh, appreciate everybody who's been checking out uh, our new discussions that we've been dropping. Make sure that you check those out. Um, We'll have some more dropping this week uh, on some topics that uh, we would love to hear your thoughts on. Um... Make sure that you follow us on Instagram at Bros Talk MMA. You can follow my bro here at r1.mason. And you can follow me at Utica underscore SME. You can also follow us at Bros Talk MMA on TikTok. Um, that's where we post all the funny clips and, you know, just all the the stuff that, you know, doesn't really have much with uh, to do with fight breakdowns. Um, make sure that you like, 
comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Oh, we're still trying to get to that 50 mark. We're almost there. Uh, start doing some live streams to add just, you know, that much more content to the channel. And, uh, yeah, um, this has been another episode of your favorite predictions, picks, and betting. T -t Today, Junior! MMA sports channel. <laughs> Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick. I'm here with my bro host, Extraordinaire. You know what it is, it's Ray Bucks, it's Chuckle Jordan, this motherfucker, give me my belt, hand me my crown. What? I don't know, man, your voice fucking just sound weird as hell. Now I don't know if you're trying to sound that low or if you need to <coughs> clear your <laughs> Is that better for you? Yeah, go ahead, start it over. It's Ray Bucks, it's Shackle Jordan, it's Mr. Hand me my belt, Terrible. give me my crown. <laughs> go ahead, man. You just fucked my whole shit up, man. You should have just let me go with the fucking with the low boy shit. Hey, I was. You looked at me. That's a, you you stopped yourself. I didn't stop you. Whatever, man. Uh <laughs> Well anyways, this <laughs> 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 Hey, bro. Well, anyways, uh, we appreciate y'all watching, and uh, best of luck betting this week. And uh, until the next time, we out.